Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. A bonus point victory for the Springboks as they beat Australia. Uh, 30 points to 12 in Perth. Uh, despite the rotations, despite making 10 changes, uh, a team that some people even dub a B team, they've gotten the job done. They've, they've beaten Australia in tricky conditions to say the least absolutely horrible weather over in perth it rained the entire game it was wet it was close it was yeah it was every single condition you don't want to play rugby in to be perfectly honest and uh, australia to give them their credit played pretty well i felt for a large part of the game in terms of keeping themselves in the game in terms of making it competitive i thought nick white was a very big addition to the side i thought he added a lot of control and balance to them but um the physicality and, and the, the quality of the box eventually shone through. Despite having that key weapon taken away from them, um, uncontested scrums for a large part of the game, about for half an hour, I think it was, in the end. And, and that's such an important part of the Springbok DNA that when you take away those uncontested scrums, um, it, it takes away a large tool, especially, especially in wet conditions where there were so many scrums, were so many handling errors, um, and once again, probably again, you look at thinking we probably should have scored another maybe one or two tries, but to score 30 points with the rotated team in three conditions, the main thing was a win for a start. That was, that was, that was the prize number one. Prize number two was to try and get that bonus point as well. We did both, um, you know, so, so we, it really is mission accomplished. Um, the busy chain to Evan Edsbeth, who had a really, really solid game. I don't know if that means he's been named man of the match. Um, but it wasn't easy conditions, to be perfectly honest. Let's go through the game, shall we? Before we do that, smash a like, by the way. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, let's have a look at at what thing, at, at what happened, shall we? And and a bit of a, a, a live sort of blow-by-blow blow account. Because it was tricky. And uh, Australia actually took the lead. Um, South Africa didn't stop particularly well. Kickoffs were a problem for both teams. We'll see that when we go to the stats. Um, the wet conditions really made it very difficult. Um, so we basically butchered the start and had a couple of bad phases. And uh, no, Lelisio actually got the points underway as he raised the flags and uh, 3 0 off two minutes. But we then cancelled that out uh, about 13 minutes later. Such a farming god, Mazzuli, spilling the poles with his first chance uh, in the 13th minute before Marcozola Mapimpi set up Apple Fassi. And it was so cool to see a couple of really good counter attacks from the screen box. This one in particular, not forward kind of the theme of the day with all the the, the weight around uh, the, the field and uh, very quick you know run the hand jesse creel to max on a pimpy uh he puts us to the boot a perfect perfect kick which held up just bopped up in front of Apple lefassi who motored around i think it was tom wright or criminal andrew Kellaway, and he dived over for the first try in the 16 minutes three points to eight you're thinking that there we go start well get that early try build the momentum then we had, uh, but unfortunately, Sad Five Gomes, you're not managing to add the extras. We then had Noel Lucia adding an extra three points. Uh, a bit silly that I think I think that was the one from um, Mornay Vandenberg where he uh, tackled him slightly early. Um, we had actually gone ahead and found out when I saw the line, I saw the 22, but TMO got involved, brought it back, and um, it was a penalty. So that became uh, six points to eight. And uh, Sash Five Gomes, Zulu, then making it six points. Uh, to 11 with a penalty of his own in the 25th minute before Nolo Lucio in the 35th minute once again to sort of re-establish that, that two-point gap. The first half was frustrating because I felt that we had so many chances which we just didn't quite finish. A couple of knock-ons we didn't need it. The lineups throughout the game and particularly in the first half were really poor. Uh, both sides to be fair because of the conditions but not great and not good enough and, and that's something that's uh, very very much needs to be worked on in general obviously again you're going to sit there looking and say well conditions wise those were tricky but need to be better in the future and moving forward with regards to to the line outs because yeah they weren't really good enough um thankfully for us started really well in the second half Malcolm and Stardin went over the rolling more looked pretty good Malcolm Marks came and scored a brace after that so for Stardin 42 Mark 62 Mark 72 Fami Gomazuli with one conversion Pollard with another um, the only sort of blip in the in the second half was one penalty from Australia as they kind of continue to try and sort of stay within touching distance. Um, the annoying thing is, is that we kind of put a Malcolm Marks and Oxen chair, and I want to try and find out exactly when it was. Um, it was here yeah, at 44, I think it was. Yeah, 44 minutes they, they came on, but then James Slipper was replaced at 48 minutes, so four minutes later, uncontested scrums for the rest of the game. 
very, very frustrating to go to uncontested scrums because um, that kind of takes away one of our biggest weapons, which was the front row that we had just put on. Um, so annoying. But uh, let's look at some individual. Let's look at some of the stats. Look at some individual players because there was some really nice performances um, in the in in a, in a really scrappy game. Um, possession was pretty even, as you kind of expect. Uh, generally played most of the rugby, fifty five percent in fact of it between the halfway and the Australia twenty two. So we were always playing in the right areas. Um, to be perfectly honest, um, with regards to to you know the position the position was played. Most of the game played. Um, a lot of it actually played in uh, the Springbok twenty two. Uh, so we had a lot of pressure, but defended uh, pretty well. If you we look at some of the, uh, the the general stats, it was four tries to none. So to score four tries in the wet, it's good to see. Uh, two conversions, two penalty goals, 97 carries, more line breaks, more turnovers lost, um, sometimes getting a little bit isolated. And I think breakdown-wise, I thought Australia won a couple of nice turnovers. But uh, let's look at the set pieces. So 77% line-up success rate for Australia, 80% for South Africa. Shows you how difficult it was. Um, our line, our our restarts were really poor. Receiving restarts, eighty six percent, not good enough. Put us under a lot of pressure, unnecessary pressure. You felt seventy five percent scrum win percent. I felt that we weren't quite getting the reward we deserved. I mean, it says ninety two percent for Australia. I felt that you know, if, had we had contested scrums in that second half, we probably would have um, had far more, you know, success at, at the scrum. So I think that was a very, very frustrating aspect. Um, of the game. Apart from that, on the attack, more post-contact beaters, more line breaks, more carries. Um, you know, turnovers weren't great, but penalties conceded Australia 11. Obviously, they had a card as well to towards the end. Uh, from a defensive point of view, 92%. We were asked to make 120. Well, we made 121 tackles out of 131. Australia made um, 118 out of 130 tackles. So pretty similar. But again, you know, there were moments where we went out wide, but most of the game was kind of... 10-man rugby, phase after phase, move, move, knock on, scrub, move, move, knock on, scrub. Um, Kicks-wise, 32 kicks from Australia, 29 from South Africa. You kind of expect to see that. Um, in terms of some individual performance, up in the fancy PSF toy with the top carries with six carries. Um, if you look at line breaks, for example, Corabetti, Colby, PSF the toy, always, all with two. We almost had a great try, by the way. I had to pull with a cross kick um, towards PSF the toy. You gathered, was brought down, Inches away, but Corbetti popped it up to Jesse Creel, who was running towards him and almost like stopped and just couldn't quite get there. Took his hand away, which is good awareness, but in doing so, then the ball kind of bounced forward and was there for forward off his step. The toy would have been a great try. Uh, tackles completed. Uh, Carlo Tazano, Josh Nasser, and Rob Valentini, the best tacklers, 15, 12, and 11, respectively. Um, there were four South Africans who made 11 tackles Thomas Toy, Ruan Okia, Marco Bastard, and Peter Steph de Toy. Um, so good work from there. Michael Marshall also coming off the bench and making eight tackles is a is a good day out. Uh, if you look at turnovers, one, uh, Quaker Smith came on and made nice turnover, uh, nice penalty one there. If you look at uh, attack, uh, Corey Betty, Fassi, PSF Twey as mentioned carried the most meters carried. Chisholm Colby with seventy eight. He had that intercept for example. He looked really um, sharp today. PSF the Toy with fifty two always seems to be up there. Defenders beaten. Tom Wright, Lucia Creel, PSF the Toy, and Quaker Smith all with two. Um, so Pierce Death's toy, you know, he's just, he, you know, he's one of those players, he kind of, he dominates stats in the forwards, he dominates stats in the back lines. What a player he is. Another strong game from him. But uh, overall, job done, isn't it? Job done. And that's the main thing. We've gone over there. We've got taken our 10 points out of 10. We are on top of the rugby championship table and we've laid down the marker. The way that New Zealand play today is a bit of a warning, but at the end of the day, I think you'll look at that and think we can beat them. We, we've rotated. We've got the job done. We've given minutes to the entire squad, which is good to see as well. Some players stood up. Some players maybe struggled. But in general, can be very, very happy with that game.